Okay, guys, we're going to go over this uh, connection that we can observe, guys, in the scriptures. A lot of times what the Holy Spirit does, he gives us information in uh, two um, different contexts of scripture. And what we can observe is that there are similar characteristics. And so we, we're going to take Revelation 8, um, chapters 8 through 10, and then we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 15. And that's it. We're taking these two, and what we can observe is that there's things, I like to call them codes, but there are connections that we can draw to allow the, the scriptures to speak for themselves and, and allow them to, um, you know, tell the story of what's going on. And uh, through that, we can observe that they're essentially talking about the same thing, okay? And that's what it means when it says scripture is no of no private interpretation. What that means is a lot of times if you just try to interpret one verse of scripture especially in the book of revelation you know you need you need other witnesses to prove what you're saying and uh, around this subject and top topic of rapture it is the most controversial subject um but we can very you see very very clear we're going to see these codes as i call them this is the work of a scribe and there are 16 codes between revelation chapters 8 and 10 and first just first corinthians 15 there's there's actually a 17th I, I'm, I'm going to mention, but um, what I'm getting at is this is beyond coincidence. It, it, you know, if there's a couple, you say, oh, okay, well, well, there's seven trumpets. Each trumpet is in 1 Corinthians 15, okay? So, guys, let's uh, get into it. In fact, I got my trumpet. Let's see if I can do a good one. All right, here we go. So, we're, um, so um some of these I'm going to grab the Bible. Um, what I have, guys, is I have this um, as notes. If any of you guys are interested in the notes, um, it, it goes over kind of like, you know, an outline form or bullet notes of uh, each one of these. But the first one is at um, Revelation um, chapter 8. It says, the in the first angel that had the uh, first trumpet sounded. Okay? So, again, he sounded. And when, the, when it says in the Greek, guys, this is why you have to look at the original language. In the Greek, that word is salpizo, okay? Now, this word is only used in Revelation, 1 Corinthians 15, and when the Lord Jesus said, blow not the trumpet when you give your offerings. So this word is tremendously significant for connecting uh, 1 Corinthians 15 with Revelation, okay? So that's salpizo. All right, and this is the seventh. Now I'm going to do, guys, the order I'm going to go and do the, the uh, Revelation uh, trumpets is I'm going to go seven um, through one. I'm going to actually do it backwards um, because this is the most critical point, and it's the seventh one that has the most information. Okay, but in 1 Corinthians 15, it says, you know, you guys, any guys talk rapture, you guys all know this. Uh, behold, uh, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Well, uh, you know, obviously in Revelation, there are trumpets, and there's a seventh one. So we consider that this is the seventh trumpet. Um, so here we have two important things. We have the last trumpet and the seventh trumpet, and we have this word, salpizo, which connects them. Okay? So last trumpet shall sound. That expression, trumpet shall sound, is salpizo in 1 Corinthians 1552. Then the next one we have is um, now what happens here is um, there are sections of uh, you know the, the trumpets that go throughout chapters eight through ten of Revelation. Okay, um, and actually into uh, Revelation eleven, I should say as well. Yeah, so this one is in Revelation eleven with the seventh trumpet sounded. Okay, then it says. The kingdoms of this world are become the Lord's and his Christ. This is uh, Revelation 11:15. Then it says in uh, 1 Corinthians um, 24 through 28. In fact, I'm going to read this one because this has uh, a bunch of uh, information here. Then comes the end when he shall uh, deliver up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall put down all rule and authority and power. So this is clearly the description we find in Revelation 11:15. Well, let's keep going. Um, for he must reign till he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy um, shall be destroyed is death. 
for he put all things under his feet, but when he says all things under his feet, it is manifest that he is ex accepted, um, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued under him, then shall the Son of Man himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Okay, so that's uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 24 through 28. So let's keep going here. Also in Revelation 11, 15, it, this actually says this twice, um, and it also says it in the song. So uh, 15 says, the kingdoms of the world become as Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever, right? Um, and uh, verse 17, saying, we give you thanks, O Lord of God Almighty, which are, which was, which is to come, because you have taken your great power and you have reigned. So here we have this expression, you have reigned, okay? Guys, these are all codes. Bang, bang, bang. We're going to keep going. Um, and he's, and now we're going to go to a Revelation 10. In Revelation 10, guys, we have this angel. In fact, just angel in himself, it talks about celestial bodies in Revelation. I didn't add that here, um, but I suppose I should. Um, but there are angels that have celestial, or there's beings that have celestial bodies or heavenly bodies. Those are angels. So when we see an angel in Revelation 10... That's another connection. So we really could say 17. Um, that one's pretty, that should really be in there. Um, but anyway, this angel, he, um, he's got his one foot in the sea and one on the earth. And, um, and then what he does is he swears, he swears by him um, who lives forever and ever and created the heavens and the earth. So Paul has an expression in 1 Corinthians 15, we have testified. So swearing, he's swearing as both hands up. He is testifying of God. Apostle Paul did the same thing. Um, and then he says, who, um, he swear by him that lives uh, forever, who created the heavens and all that was there and in the earth and all that was there. And well, we find this um, in 1 Corinthians 15, 47. The first man is of the earth, speaking of Adam, and the second man is of heaven, so heaven and earth, okay? These are all codes, guys, heaven and earth. Um, the next one is um, verse 7 of Revelation. Behold, I will show you a mystery. Again, what we do is we look back at the original Greek. We find this word, mysterion, and uh, Apostle Paul said the same thing. Um, uh, behold, I show you a mystery, and the, and the mystery that God should be finished, okay? Um, that's in, these are the same, this is the same word, mysterion, mystery, okay? So that's uh, Revelation 10, 7 and 1 Corinthians 51, uh, 15, verse 51. All these are 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15. I'll just give you the verse when I say Corinthians, okay? All right, that is the seventh seal. Those are all the things I just told you about the seventh seal. There are six bullet points right there. I could say seven if I add the angel, but let's keep going. The next, what we're going to do is we have the army. Now, the army um, is the sixth trumpet, okay? And it clearly talks about an army. Now, we find this uh, expression of army also in 1 Corinthians, where Paul says, everyone in their order. In an order, there is a body of soldiers. So that's 1 Corinthians um, verse 23, okay? Then they have breastplates, which are thorax, okay? Now, this one is not in uh, Corinthians, guys, but I want to make mention of this breastplate because this word only appears in Revelation um, and in um, Ephesians and Thessalonians, okay? So, where it appears, it appears to be something that is a breastplate of two armies, okay? So, for example, we can see in the fifth trumpet that the locust army also has breastplates, okay? But then you see another army with breastplates. So we consider that these two armies are separate and at odds against each other, okay? Um, but we find this breastplate of righteousness in Ephesians 6, 14, where you put on the whole armor of God, and also uh, this breastplate of faith and love in First Thessalonians 5, verse 8. Okay. Also in uh, the sixth trumpet, it says that they repented not of their works and their idols, okay? And then it says 
in Thessalonians that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Um, neither does um, that which is uh, corruptible and inherit incorruption. Okay? All right, let's keep going. The fifth trumpet. These are all the trumpets. We're just we're going through them, guys. Um, it talks about those with the seal of God on, in their foreheads. Okay? Um, and then at his coming, it also talks about the first fruits. The Lord Jesus is his first fruits. I'm going to read the whole verse. But every man in his own order, when we just talked about the order of the army, um, Christ the first fruits, and afterwards they which are Christ at his comings. So we know that um, these are the first fruits, and the first fruits are clearly described as those with the seal of God on their forehead right here in Revelation. Okay, also it says, um, men shall seek death. And again, this is, now we're in chapter 9 of Revelation. This is verse 6, okay? Uh, they'll seek death and not find it. Well, we find death is swallowed up in victory. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 54. Um, and this, in this locust army, guys, they have stings in their tail. The word in Greek for stings is kentron. Okay, that's the Greek word. We find the same identical word where Paul talks about death. Death, where is your sting? Kentron. Same exact word. All these are code. Bang, bang, bang. All right. That's uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 55. Now, we go to the fourth trumpet. A third part of the sun, a third part of the moon, a third part of the stars were stricken. Okay? Paul talks about the glory of the sun, the glory of the moon, and the glory, another glory of the stars. He's talking about glory. That's uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 41. Okay? That is the fourth trumpet. All right, we get to the third trumpet. Um, one star, um, and this is this is uh, a one star differs from another in glory. Now that's in in Corinthians, First uh, Corinthians fifteen forty one. Now the third trumpet, guys, it talks about a then fell a great star. Okay, and Greek great is mega. So it's the same thing. There's a difference of the glory of the stars that Apostle Paul is talking about, but there's also a difference of the magnitude of the star in the third trumpet versus the other stars or things um, that you see in, in uh, Revelation chapters 8 and 9. Okay? Um, then, uh, the second trumpet, um, it, it talks about a, the mountain coming down in the earth and a third part of the creatures of the sea. Now, the creatures of the sea are fish. Well, Paul talks about the fish. There's a certain kind of flesh of the fish. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 39. Okay? Now, we get to the first trumpet. Uh, first trumpet is hail and fire mixed with blood. Okay, well, uh, Apostle Paul said flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom. Uh, so we got blood. Um, that's uh, Revelation 8, 7 and 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. And he cast it to the earth. All right. Now, this is where we have Adam. Adam. Now, the first Adam. So, Adam means red earth. Okay. So, this is the same thing. In addition to that, he is the uh, first man which is of the earth. That it says in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 15, 47. So, the first Adam is verse 45. And the, the first man which is of the earth. That's 47. So, guys, this that's it. That's uh, 16 codes, all these things that clearly show us the events of Revelation chapters 8 through 10 are clearly the same thing in 1 Corinthians 15. Thus, the uh, army in uh, the sixth trumpet and the rapture in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 are the same. The last trump is the same as the seventh trumpet, guys. Clearly, we can see this. We let the scripture speak for themselves. Uh, that's 16 points um, uh, proving this, uh, you know, making it very, very clear. Okay? So, guys, God bless you. And, um, you know, this is the type of thing that you can share with people. Tell them, look, this is, these are the same thing. Um, this, that um, event in 1 Corinthians 15 is the same as the last trump and the seventh trumpet in Revelation. I'm going to do the same thing with uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. These are the predominant scriptures on the rapture. 
and we're going to clear it up. There are two events. They are not the same. Okay, when the Son of Man comes in the cloud, that's 1 Corinthians, um, I mean, that's Matthew 24. That's the same thing as 1 Thessalonians 4. I'm going to do the same thing as this. Because what we do, guys, is what people do is they interpret improperly. Revelation has the precedence over Corinthians. Paul says it, 1 Corinthians 15, I am least of the apostles. So that means uh, his words are in support of the higher apostles. Well, the higher apostle here is John. And John gives us revelation. The, the uh, Lord Jesus, heaven and earth pass away. My words will not pass away. Lord Jesus, his words, Matthew 24, has precedence over uh, Paul's writings. Okay, So uh, people have great error in, in focusing on just isolating those scrippers without taking the full context. So God bless you guys, and we'll have some more soon.